Today's project I'm calling a single section bradle binding. It's based on a design by Barbara Tettenbaum, which was first published in Festschrift 2009, a celebration of the work of Hetty Kyle, and has been reprinted in the bone folder. And there's links in the description below. The clever thing about this design is how the text is attached to the case. It's done by a fold of cloth that goes around the single section text block. One of Barbara's design goals was to have the V shape of the spine of the pamphlet centered in the case of the binding. The resulting book opens extremely flat and I think is perfect for music. Thus, for this project, I've decided to bind the music for O Christmas Tree. Recently, a composer wrote me and told me about a website where you can download music for free. And that's where I got this music from. I'll put a link in the description below. There's seven pages of music. So I'm doing a four sheet pamphlet. Then I'll put a single white on the outside and a decorative paper as well. So I'll fold those first. The decorative paper is a paste paper that I made recently. And because it has a messy back, I will tip that to the outer white once everything else is completed. The final part for the text block is a strip of cloth. I'm going to cut that 70 millimeters wide or roughly three inches. It can be a little bit more or a bit less. You'll be able to see the cloth in the finished product. So you want the good side of the cloth to face into the book. Once I have all the components of the text block together, I'll use a couple of small bulldog clips to hold everything in place while I pierce the sewing holes. I will sew this like a normal pamphlet. I'm going to put the knot on the inside. So you start with the needle on the inside, go to the outside. It's an A5 size book. So I think five sewing holes is sufficient. One in the center, one at the head and tail in about 10 millimeters, and one halfway between the original holes. If it was an A4 size book, you might want to go to seven sewing holes. It is a standard pamphlet sewing. I want the knot on the inside, so I'll start on the inside weave down towards the end, go back towards the center, skip the center hole on the way back, work back to the center with the tail of the thread either side of the thread going head to tail, tie a square knot or a reef knot. There's much more detailed instructions on this sewing pattern in the video on a single section pamphlet. Now it's time to make the case. As usual, the grain direction of the board needs to be head to tail. 
It's a square back book, so we'll cut a piece of board for the spine as well. And that will be the thickness of the text plus the boards. I'm going to round that down to 7 millimeters. So I'll cut that out of the oversized boards that I'm using for the covers. The book is thin enough that the edges can be trimmed with a ruler and knife. I'll start by trimming the fore edge and then the head and tail. I'm going to do two millimeter squares at the head and tail and three at the fore edge. So I'll add four millimeters to the height of the text for the height of the boards. Now I'll join the three boards together in the usual bradle binding method. I'll glue the spine strip to an oversized piece of paper. Just about any paper will work, but uh, a stronger paper is nice. I'm using Permalife. Once the board is attached to the strip of paper, then I'll trim up the paper to, I think I did 40 millimeters either side, 30 millimeters is enough, and then I'll trim up the head and tail. I'll use a bone folder to then crease the paper down the edges of the spine strip, and then I'll mark a line, the width of the joint, away from the spine board. Now the starting point I normally use is seven millimeters. However, I've got these new gauges from Talus that I want to try out and they're in uh, inches. So I'm going to use the quarter of an inch, which is a bit over six millimeters, so close enough. So I'll draw that line six and a bit millimeters away from the spine board. Now I'll glue the boards to the spine piece. I haven't cut the boards to width yet, so I have to make sure that I remember to glue the straight edge towards the spine. I'm really liking these new gauges from Talus. It would be nice if they were in metric, 
but I did live in the US for 10 years, so it is, is a bit nostalgic for me to be working in feet and inches. Now I will fit the text to the case so I can mark the four edges. Notice how I am pushing the paper down into the groove so that it's fairly close to the final position of the paper. After I put the cloth on the boards, I will use the pressing boards with the knitting needles taped to the edge. I'm just eyeballing the square on the foredge, so I'm doing three millimeters. And if I end up uh, pulling a bit more material into that joint, then the foredge square may end up being a bit under three millimeters, but by oversizing it a millimeter, it won't be noticeable. So it's sort of like a little insurance policy. Do a final check that the squares are all correct. At some point I did mark the front and up on the book, on the text and on the case. And now I will cover the case in the usual manner. So I will glue out all the cloth. Start with one board, flip it over, force the paper down into the joints, over the spine, into the second joint, and then finally the second board. I talk about this a lot in the video on the square back bridle binding, and I think I uh, use Peter Farhan's diagram in that video as well. So if that didn't make uh, complete sense to you, maybe you go have a look at that video. Now I've used straight PVA, though mix would be a really good choice for this. That way if you do have any issues, like you drop the cloth on the board and get creases on it, then you can lift that up without an issue and reposition the cloth. Now I managed to pick that up really quickly so it wasn't an issue but maybe I hadn't got the cloth into the joints properly. With mix you would be able to lift that up and reposition. Now I'll trim the turn-ins and you will know that I normally use either 15 or 20 millimeters for the turn-ins. Uh, this is three quarters of an inch, which is a bit under 20 millimeters. So a pretty good size. Now I'll cut the corners off one and a half board thicknesses from the corner. I'll do it by eye. And if you're a little bit nervous about that, you can either buy cutting gauges or you can uh, measure it and cut it with the ruler on the bench. Always do the head and tail turn-ins first and then the four edges. To finish the case and to get rid of any slight bumps underneath the cloth from lumpiness in the adhesive, I'll give the case a good solid six second nip. If you don't have a steel press to do that, then that's not the end of the world. I'm sure the case will look really good without it, but it does really uh, finish off a case if you can give it a nip.
The second last step is attaching the text to the case and that's done with the cloth hinge and in Barbara Tettenbaum's article she describes using these tricky little tools called casing in boards which are pieces of binders board or grey board that have been cut to the same height as the text block and are wider than the text block. So I'm just using one millimeter grey board and I've cut that to the same height as the text block. And there's one square end which I've marked and I put a board either side of the text block inside the cloth hinge and then I'll position that inside the case and then I will glue one side of the cloth and then the other. Now this cloth is attached all the way around on the inside of the case. There's no hollow between the case and this cloth. I'll glue one side up to the spine. I'll flip the book over and then glue out the other side of the cloth hinge but I'll make sure that there's adhesive on the spine of the cloth hinge. The casing in boards are used to push the text block back into the case and to push the cloth of the hinge up against the inside of the case. So I did it after I did one side and now I'm going to do the second side getting plenty of adhesive into the spine and then I'll close the case and then use those casing in boards to make sure that the cloth hinge is well and truly adhered to the inside of the case. the bone folder to make sure that that cloth is well glued down and then uh, nip it in the press using boards with knitting needles attached to the edge of the boards. The final step is to put paste downs on the inside of the boards. So they should be the same height as the text block and go from the inside edge of the boards out to the same width as the text block. I'm actually going to cut mine about a half a millimetre short and I will put them down from the outside or the fore edge towards the inside and that will ensure that the paste down doesn't extend past the text block and is noticeable when the book is closed. Though it's such a thin book, it would be hard to see anyway.
I almost forgot a step. I almost forgot to tip the end papers together. So once I tip these together, that will be the book completed. So that's the project finished for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video and as always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you're able to and would like to support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And until next time, cheerio! Happy